Have you asked the question lately, what is going on in the world? Where, where are these decisions coming from? Who thinks of these things to do? How did we get to this place? I think we've all asked that question a lot in the last five, 10, maybe 15 years. But it all started in Genesis chapter three with the fall of man. Now you know the story, you have Eve and you have Adam and the, the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. These were the only two trees in the garden that the Lord had specifically asked Adam and Eve not to eat from. But the serpent shows up in Genesis chapter three, verse two, and the woman says to the serpent, we may eat from the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. You must not touch it or you will die. The serpent comes in in verse four, you certainly will not die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now we all know that the serpent took what God said and twisted it around and it was like a half truth, but it was the temptation to eat the fruit. But the phrase that I want to focus on here is in verse three, where it went so far as to not just say, don't eat it, but do not touch it. Sin is easily defined. It is anything that we think, say, or do that doesn't please God. It's an easy definition and a simple filter to put in our lives, from our thoughts to our words to our actions. Anything that we think, say, or do that would not please God. Those are the things we shouldn't be a part of. And scripture says right here, don't touch it. Don't flirt with it. Don't play with sin. Don't get close to it. Now, I'm sure you remember being around a campfire as a child and you don't have to get close to the campfire to feel the heat. Mom and dad surely told you, don't touch it. Don't get close to it. You can be near it, enjoy the warmth, but don't touch it. It'll burn you. The thing about fire is that you don't have to make contact to feel the heat from the fire. And sin often works that way too. You don't have to be in the middle of the sin for it to have an effect on your life. And sometimes we know something isn't right, but we're okay with it because we're not really doing it. We're just enjoying this side of it. And it seems okay. But when you flirt with it, you become comfortable with it. And when you become comfortable with it, you step a little bit further. And when we become so desensitized to the sin that is in our world, we become tolerant of it in our lives. So here's the challenge for you today. Place that filter into your life. Anything that we think, say, or do that doesn't please God towards ourselves or the people around us, we need to let that filter get in place and let the Holy Spirit use that filter to catch things coming out of us that are not edifying to the Lord and His creation. God has a plan for your life, and it's not to add smoke and smolder and pollution to the world that he created. So the way that we change the world is we live our life according to the way God called us to. Bring love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control with you every day, and share it unconditionally. You will change the world around you. And if we all begin to change the world around us, it'll look differently because we operate different, we think different, you're built different. You're built as a child of God. That's why you're in this world, but you're not of this world. You get to be different according to God's word and you will change everything around you when you do.